can our loved ones send us messages from above? According to Bill and Judy Gutterheim, co-authors of the book Hello from Heaven, they can, and it's much more common than you think. Today I will go over five ways that a person who has passed away that you love can contact you. During their seven years of research, the couple interviewed over 2,000 people who've experienced after-death communication. And they estimate that a minimum 60 million people, so 20% of the population of the US, have had an experience. And other studies estimate that that number is even higher. I remember a cold evening when I was living in Stockholm and I was going to my first um, shans, I think it's called in English. It's where a practitioner communicates with spirits, usually deceased loved ones, of the people in the audience. And I remember it was so heartwarming to hear what they had to say to their relatives on earth in the audience. Like everybody was just crying, it was so emotional. So I got curious, how else are people who've passed away communicating with us? And I found an article that was so beautiful by Cheryl Wagner, a psychic and a medium. I will link to her blog post in the description and um, I will read to you here uh, the five signs that a deceased loved one is communicating with you. Before we get into it, if you want to get more in tune with your psychic abilities and third eye so that you are more easily able to communicate with spirits such as deceased loved ones, then the first step is to decalcify your pineal gland or third eye. Pineal XD contains nine powerful natural ingredients and superfoods that have been perfectly combined to support a healthy pineal gland well into old age, while withstanding any threat or external attack that might compromise their natural functioning. I've linked to Pineal XD in the description if you want to check it out. And without further ado, here are five signs that a loved one is communicating with you. The first sign is that you actually feel their presence. Your body is like an antenna for energetic, psychic and spirit information. When you are experiencing something profound that expands your consciousness, you will feel it. You may have a physical sensation when receiving a sign that your loved one is in spirit are around. Some people say that they get chills or feel a difference in body temperature. Sometimes it may be that you simply feel a subtle change in the atmosphere and emotionally you may feel very loved or loving. I love that. The second sign she mentions is divine timing. Sign synchronicities and validations are likely to come to you when you are struggling, in need or ask for help from the spirit world. Your loved ones may send you a sign to let you know that you are on the right path or validation for hard choices you've had to make. When you try something new, going through a major change, taking a leap of faith or learning about spiritual topics. The third sign that she mentioned is signs through nature. Many people associate birds, butterflies or dragonflies with signs from their loved ones in spirit. If you observe a hummingbird quickly flutter from one beautiful place to the next, or the translucent, angelic seeming wings of a dragonfly, it's easy to see why. When my grandmother was alive, she had a love for cardinals, and I often associate the sweet birds with her presence. They remind me of days spent looking out the window at her gardens, bird feeder, and the joy they brought her. You may have specific signs that hold unique meaning between you and your loved one. Being in nature can restore your energy and allow you to feel the natural vibration of the earth and elements. Just as your deceased loved ones have a spirit, you yourself have a spirit, and both are energetically connected to all life, including plants and animals. And being in nature allows you to be immersed in life that is ever-changing and many people feel they receive signs when they are outdoors and connecting this way. Perhaps a butterfly that lands on you or an animal that comes unusually close to you causes you to think of a loved one. Try to remain open and unattached as you allow these signs to come to you. Sign number four is that you are present. Over-focusing on and constantly looking everywhere for specific signs can limit your ability to receive them. There is no limit to how often you can ask for signs, but once you do, allow the universe time to respond. Being overly focused on a specific idea of the sign you want or trying to control the process does not lead to more signs and is never helpful. You create your life from the present moment, from now. 
So set your intention to receive signs and then go experience life. The fifth way that a deceased one could be communicating with you is through numbers and synchronicities. Many people notice numbers, patterns and synchronicities. The exact number you see repeating isn't important, rather it's the importance you place on it. If you associate a certain loved one with the number 77 and you see that sign on a license plate in front of you when you're having a particularly tough day, you get to your office and notice that you have 77 new notifications. The following week you are meeting a new client and notice their address is 77. You can be sure that this synchronicity is a sign from your loved one that they are around you supporting you. Wasn't that beautiful? I have linked the articles down below in the description if you want to read the full one. Do you think that you had an after-death communication? Let me know in the comments. Love you so much and have a beautiful day.